Hello you guys. I just finished up a huge quilting project. I am looking to have some creative fun today printing on fabric using freezer paper. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. Freezer paper has so many different uses in our sewing room and today I thought I would show you how I utilize this product to come up with countless ways to get creative with our sewing and quilting projects. I thought I would bring you along and show you my process for printing on fabric. Take a second and talk about the different things that you want to gather for today's fun project. Of course we have the Reynolds freezer paper. This can be found at your grocery stores or typically I like to buy mine from Walmart because I get a bigger box for a lot less money and this big box lasts me so long. Let's talk about the fabric that you want to use. In my experience I have found the higher quality the fabric the better image result I have in the end after the printing process. So keep that in mind when you are making your fabric selection. Let's talk about the two different kinds of printers that typically most of us have. We have inkjet printers and the laser printers. Most fabrics that you buy in like Joann's or quilting shops, fabric that is sold to be printed on most of them recommend inkjet printers. Mainly that's because the paper that the fabric is on that aids the fabric going through the printer has an adhesive or a sticky residue on the paper that actually holds the fabric to the paper. If you put that sticky stuff through a laser printer, the heat from the laser printer actually melts that sticky whatever it is. That's one of the reasons why they recommend an inkjet printer because there's no heat involved. An inkjet printer actually uses two different kinds of inks. You have a dye-based ink and a pigment-based ink. Good luck on trying to figure out which one your printer cartridges are made up of. Harlan has an inkjet printer. We've looked at all of his, cart uh, all of his inks and they don't tell you what they're made out of. <laughs> From my research, what I have found out is that the dye-based inks are um, colorants that are dissolved in liquid. And the pigment-based inks for an inkjet printer are actually fine bits of powder that are suspended in liquid. And that's what gets printed on your paper or your fabric. Laser printers actually use toner. And toner is made out out or out of really ultra fine ground polyester. I did not know that. And I have been printing on my laser printer for since I got it. <laughs> and most websites that you go to or most videos, they always tell you not to use the laser printer. But you guys, if you've watched my videos, you know that I typically don't listen <laughs> and I experiment anyways. And I have awesome results using my laser printer. No matter the type of printer that you have, what I highly recommend is that you experiment. Okay, don't go straight to making a large quilt that you are gifting to someone and you have never used this fabric or your inks in your printer on a project before without experimenting to see how everything is going to stay, whether it's going to be permanent or not. Start with some small projects and experiment and see how your printer works, what fabrics are best for your printer, and different ways to heat set and make your projects permanent. So I'm going to go over the basic things that I do. I'm going to show you how my printer works and uh, show you a before and after picture of a project that I've done to show you the results that I've gotten with my laser printer. I'm going to also put in the description box below a page from a kit that I've recently come up with. Uh, it's a mug rug kit. It has several pages of printables. So if you don't have a, an image um, 
to use while you're experimenting and trying out this process, you can go here. It's in my Dropbox. It's a free download, one of the pages from my kit, and you can start practicing or experimenting to see how your printer works, to see how your ink works, to try different ways to heat set your inks, and uh, see how the whole process works. Let's go ahead and get started and uh, start printing. Let's take a look at a little small recent project that I just finished. This is a piece of fabric that I printed my image on. Again, I'm using a laser printer. And you can see how crisp and clean the image is. And this has not been washed or gone through the laundry. And this same fabric is a piece or a remnant left over from this. And this has been through the laundry. And while there is some fading, typically it's not any more than you would have from your normal quilter's cotton going through the laundry. I was really pleased with the way that it all stayed and went through the wash. So I will post a picture of this mug rug before and after so that you can see this project, how it looked before I washed it and after. But I was really pleased with the way uh, all of the toner or the ink stayed on the fabric. You, of course, could do projects or art quilts that you never intend on washing. Uh, you know, when you wash your projects, you get a whole different look to your quilt. And um, some art quilts or smaller projects never get put through the laundry anyway. And so color fasting might not even be an issue for you. I'm going to go ahead and pull out the freezer paper and we're going to get started. All right, we have our roll of freezer paper. And keeping in mind that a standard size piece of paper is 8.5 by 11, and that's what goes through our printer, we're going to go ahead and pre-cut some freezer paper to a little bit bigger than a standard size piece of paper. We're going to uh, adhere that to our fabric and then actually trim to an exact size of 8.5 by 11. And that gives us nice, really crisp, clean edges that feed through our printers very easily. So I like to go ahead and pre-cut some sheets of freezer paper that are about nine inches by 11 and a half inches. And that gives us just a little of extra working room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there is two sheets. So we'll stack these together and put them at the same time. It wants to roll up on you and be unruly. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and a half. So again, it is just slightly bigger than your sheet of standard copy paper. We're going to take this and our fabric to the iron and go ahead and adhere this to our fabric. We are ready to go ahead and heat set our freezer paper to our fabric. I have my iron heating up and for this part of the process I like uh, to set my iron at the setting number four. That is not too, too hot. Keep in mind your freezer paper has a shiny side that is not sticky. That's just like some kind of a waxy coating that adheres to your fabric. And that is the side that you are placing to the wrong side of your fabric. So keep that in mind. 
I like to go ahead and give my fabric a good press and make sure that, that all the wrinkles are out before we get started. And here we go. Remember your fabric is face down and we are putting the sheet to the wrong side of the fabric. This is going to take a minute because you really want this paper to adhere really well to your fabric. And you don't want any lifting because that could cause your image to be distorted or it could cause issues in the printing process itself. So I like to iron on the paper side first. And then I'll flip it over and give a good press from the fabric side as well. You want a nice good bond with the fabric and the paper. If you have your iron set too hot, you will actually get some bubbles with the paper itself. And uh, so again, I like to have my iron set at about four and that gives me the best results as far as a nice smooth fabric surface. And we will let that cool off before we start cutting to our actual paper size. I went ahead and it did several fabric sheets at one time since I was at the iron. And I have uh, several projects that I want to use uh, my fabric on. At this point we are ready to go ahead and cut our fabric with our freezer paper adhered to it to the exact size of uh, our standard sheet of copy paper, which is eight and a half by 11. So you are simply cutting just like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. Just like that, we have nice, clean edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So you can see we have very little waste. And just like that we have our sheet of fabric. Everything is nice and smooth. After it cools down you should have no wrinkles and everything should be nice and well bonded and no strings along your edges. I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting these and we're going to meet up in the office at the printer. All right, join me at my desk here. I have my digital love letter kit opened up. It is saved as a PDF. And so I have the file open here and I have the different sheets. As we scroll through, you can see all the sheets that are included. Today we are going to print off and I'm going to make available this sheet. So if you would like to practice with this sheet, I'm going to have it in the drop box down in the description box below. We're going to go ahead and print off this sheet. So you would go to your printer. 
we're going to select the current page, which is that page. And we're going to go into our set settings for the paper type and quality. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, letter size. Where is that? There we go. And the type, I'm going to change it from plain paper to thick paper. And I'm going to select my source as manual. My printer has a manual um, feed tray, so I can actually put the paper in myself. And so, again, we have letter size, type thick paper, and source manual. And I would choose that if that's an option for your printing. We're going to go back. And everything is set. I would only do one copy at a time. You're going to want to make sure that everything is feeding through and you're standing there at your printer as the, the fabric is going through. So we are ready to print this off. Oops. I'm going to go ahead and move you over to the printer and we'll see how this comes out. Here we are at my printer. This is my manual tray. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. I have my sheet of fabric paper. And I have to hit one more button for it to print. For my printer, I have the fabric side facing up. Again, that could vary based on your printer. And it's going through. And just like that, we have our images on our fabric. And look how nice and clean and crisp that image is. All right, I have several more sheets I want to print out while I'm here. We're going to meet back. I'm going to show you how I heat set this and then we are done. Okay, we are back in the shop. We have our print. Again, you can see what that looks like. And at this point, we're ready to go ahead and take the freezer paper off of the fabric carefully. If you bend it towards the paper side, the corner will lift. And now we're just peeling this off. We're going to try and do it without distorting our fabric or stretching it out of shape. And sometimes it comes off easier. I guess it really depends on the fabric that you used. But because it was freezer paper, there's nothing sticky left on your fabric. I'm just trying to be careful not to distort the fabric at all. Just like that it comes off and there is our fabric and nothing is stretched out of shape and we're ready to go ahead and heat set this now at this point go ahead and turn your iron up to the highest cotton setting and heat that up and I like to put my printed side down first and we're just going to give this a good press for quite a few seconds over the entire printed area. Just like that. And then I do like to press mine from the right side as well. 
no steam at this point we're using a dry iron And just like that, our images are set. And see the drape of this? A lot of the fabric that you buy that are color fasted that you can print on are really stiff. And this is the fabric's natural drape. So it's nice and soft. It does not feel funny. The printed image does not have a different feel than the rest of the fabric. And I'm going to swing you right over here and I'm going to show you with some water we're going to go ahead and spray this if my spray bottle will work <laughs> here we go see that it's pretty drenched I'm going to bring you down closer And there's no bleeding. There's no transfer, no bleeding. So with this method, I would say that that's pretty safe to use in a project that you're going to wash. I hope this helps you guys. Uh, this printable is down below if you'd like to give this method a try and uh, tell me what you think. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below or hop on over to Facebook. I'm going to leave a link to my Facebook in the description box below. Have fun with this creative process, you guys. Uh, I look forward to seeing the projects that you guys come up with. Bye.